Hey, welcome. Today we'll create a B-Rep solid from surfaces. Some of these are imported and the others will be obtained by creation in Patron. We will create new surfaces using existing edges or breaking existing surfaces. We'll also use the trimmed method and not shing. Surfaces are created in Patron to apply constraints or pressures. So uh, that will be the first part of the video and in the second part we are going to mesh the solid that we'll create now. First we'll go to file and new. We have to find the folder where we'll save everything and we'll name the database as anchor. For model preferences the model dimension will be 70. The analysis type is structural, analysis code will be nastran. Now we'll import the part that we already have. So we go to File, Import, we'll select an IGES source. So we'll select Azure.IGS. We'll remove this import a parasolid because we are following an older version. So we cannot import as a parasolid. When the summary pops up, we'll click OK. And now we have the first part of the anchor. Now we'll create the first surface. We'll go to geometry. The action is create object surface and the method will be curve. So the option will be using two curves. We'll just click off auto execute so we can be in control of what's happening. The starting curve is this right side, surface 10.7, and the ending curve is this side on the left, surface 9.3. We'll click apply and we have the new surface right here. Now we'll use the um, trim the method and for option we'll use planner here we're going to use an auto chain the auto chain method so we'll click here and we'll take again auto execute off so we can be in control we'll start right here and the point of this is to make sure that patron takes this path so it selects a whole curve and we have to make sure that it's selecting the right ones so once we have the start which is this edge we'll go to OK this is this is our uh, start curve so now we're ready and we'll click apply so here we can see that it's already taken the next edge we can see that it's chosen this one because of this magneta point. If, it, if this wasn't selected, we would have to click next in order to make sure that it gets the right path in the right direction. So we'll click OK and again it's following the right path. OK, OK and finally OK. So we have to go all the way back to the start. Now that we have this new curve, we'll just go cancel and in outer loop list we want to select this curve precisely. So it will be the curve 1 and we'll click apply. We want to make sure that we delete the original curves, so the ones that were traced down by the auto chain. Now we have again the new surface. As you can see it's closed here. Now we will delete these extra surfaces. So in geometry, we'll go to action, delete any object, and we'll select this too. This and shift, click this, so we can select both of them at the same time. We want we wanted to delete these ones because uh, we we're gonna eventually mirror this, and we're gonna make a solid out of it so the, if we had kept this this would have been inside the solid we can see it's hollow now 
next we're going to create some points in these curves uh, specifically some center points for these arcs so we'll go to action create we want to create points and the method will be arc center again we want to take auto execute off just to make sure that you know we're not doing anything two times by accident and the curve for this are these ones Here you have to make sure that you're selecting surfaces, not curves. So we have in curve list, we want this one and surface 5.2 and we want the, the bottom one. So shift click and we have 5.2 and 5.4. We'll click apply and here we can see that the arc centers have been created. After doing so, we want to create a new coordinate system. So we'll go to object, chord, and the method will be tree point. The type of coordinate we want will be cylindrical, because you have to realize that we're inside a cylinder. We'll take off the auto execute again. And now to make this easier, we'll change this view up a little bit. We'll go to wireframe view and we want to increase the point size so it's more visible. The origin for this new coordinate system will be this point, point 39, the point on axis 3 will be point 40 and the last one will be point 31 right here. So we'll go with apply and here we can see the new coordinate system. We'll go back to the view we just had so we'll reduce again the point uh, size and we'll go to smooth shaded view. Now we have the new coordinate system. Now we're going to create a new curve using the translating method. So in action, we'll go to transform a curve using the translate method. The type of transformation will be curvilinear. The referred coordinate frame will be the one we just created, so chord 1. The translation vector will be 2, 0, 0. The curve list will be right this one. So we select surface 5.2 and we click apply. Now we have this new curve right here based off of this one. Now we'll break some surfaces. So we'll go to action, edit. surface and break the option for this will be curve and we want to select this surface and the break curve list will be the uh, curve we just made so it will be curve 1 And we'll click apply. We want to make sure that also we delete the original surfaces so we don't have like double surfaces over this on top of this. Again, we're going to break another more surface. So we'll go to action, edit, the kind of object, still a surface, and the method will be break. Now the option will be parametric. We want to make sure that the break direction is constant V direction. The parametric value will be 0.5 and we'll go and select another curve, well, another surface, surface tree in this case. Again, we want to delete the original surfaces so we don't have any replicate or double surfaces on top of each other. And a note is that they should be broken up horizontally, as you can see. Here we have the horizontal break. Now we'll add some vertex, some vertex here. And we'll go to Action Edit Object Surface, and the method will be Add Vertex. The surface for this will be just the sides and each new point here. 
so we can remain coherent. Now we'll just turn around and repeat the same step. Surface 9 and point 43. Apply. Now we're ready to do the mirroring of the surface. So now we'll go to transform surface and the method will be mirror. Now this is quite important, the mirror plane normal is going to be the base from which we reflect the mirror. So we want to select three points. Our three points will be selected by clicking this icon, three points for a plane, and we'll select these edges here. This point, this point, and finally this one. So we have the point 36, 33, and 24. Now for the surface list, we want to select every single surface here to be copied and mirrored. So we'll choose this surface icon and simply here we'll click pick all. So we have every single surface and we can apply the mirror. Now we have half of the piece that we want for the final solid. Here you can see that it's been perfectly mirrored on top of uh, right in front of each other. We can see why it was important that we remove the surfaces that we did so that it's hollow inside. Now we'll repeat this step. But we want to mirror the whole new object that we've got. We'll select other three points so that the mirror is normal to those and we'll go with the edges. Again, we'll check the points here. It's point 6, point 64, and 63. For the surface list, again, we want to select each and every one. So after selecting the surface icon, we'll go to pick all and apply. Finally, we have the entire object and now we're ready to create the VRIP solid so we'll go to action again in, we're still we're only working in geometry so we'll go to action create object solid and method will be VRIP we want to make sure that the solid ID list is one because we have only made one the surface list again will be the entire the entirety of all the surfaces that we've done so again, we click surface and we select all, apply, and we have our solid. Now we just want to uh, show the, only the, the solid or like the lines. So we'll change this view to make it kind of easier. We'll go to wireframe, we'll select the wireframe view. And here in miscellaneous, we'll click the plot erase icon. We'll select the entirety of this, so we have to go to geometric entity and then we have to select solid. Now we can select solid one and we'll erase all and then we can plot. And finally only the solid is showing. Now we're ready to create the mesh. So we'll go from the main tabs, we'll go to meshing, we'll create a mesh for the solid. But since we only have the student's edition, we can only make the TED4 meshing. Input list will be again solid 1, and here in global edge length, we will not have an automatic calculation, we'll choose 20 for the global edge length, and we can apply. Before applying, we have to make sure that the test mesh, test mesh parameters are default, so we won't change anything there for now. And we'll click apply. We now have our first mesh. So now we want to verify the quality of our mesh. 
but first we'll verify our elements. So we'll verify object element test boundaries on three faces. And now we'll apply and we can see everything here. And it's looking fine. So now we'll go back and verify the quality of the meshing itself. Here we'll test all and then we'll apply. Here we can see the summary and how many of the elements failed the tests. Here we can see the worst cases for each and every one of, of these tests. So here we can see that we're going to take this as a measure standard. So we have that the maximum is 6.8. Now we'll, verif no, now we'll adjust the aspect ratio of the elements. So the test will be aspect and we're going to change the aspect ratio down to near 5. We're going to apply this and now we can see all of the details. Now after changing this aspect ratio we will reset mesh so we'll mesh again. We'll go to create we, we, we will uh, remain with every single input that we already had, so like TED4, Global Edge 40, but now we're going to change the TED mesh parameters. Here we'll go to with 0 0.05 and the Global Edge length multiplier will be 0 0.1. We'll click OK and we'll apply. We'll, we'll want to make sure that we'll delete the existing mesh, of course, so we can replace it. Now that we have our new, our new mesh, which looks way finer, we'll again test for the quality of this new TED mesh. So we'll go to verify, TED and all. Again, we'll just apply and let it run the tests. If you remember, our first worst case element was had a value of 6.8. Now we can see and we can compare from the past worst case we had 5.8 here and now we have 4.78. The same with all the other worst cases. We can see that there's been a, a, a lot of reduction in the worst case scenarios for this. So we'll just click cancel and here we have our final mesh. We'll just stay with this one. This has been everything you need to know to get... Um, 
this mesh down on this piece especially get familiar with the geometry functions of my pattern thanks for watching and we'll continue to work with this piece in the future